Hey boots, hey! It is Lexus Exodus, leader of the Black Woman Exodus. How are you guys doing? Like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Please share. Please say what's up to me in the comment section. Say what's up to me in the chat. Hey, y'all in the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Also, when you have a moment, please pause this video and follow the backup channel. It is called Lex X. That's L-E-X-E-X. -E -E you can also find the link in the description below. Also, if you have any suggestions or any ideas for any new stories, feel free to share that to me to my Gmail. That is LexisExodusChannel at gmail.com. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the exotical. And exotical, I'm not quite sure where I initially heard that phrase from. I think I may have heard it from Paris Milan. So shout out to her. Um, if not, please feel free to correct me for um, and to credit who originated that term. So anyway, so you're exotical. Let's go into their profile. So their appearance, they are racially ambiguous women and quote unquote exotic looking women their behavior. The exotical is a non-Black woman who is, like I said, racially ambiguous. And she's pedestalized by Tyrone because she is exotic and she's typically Hispanic, Asian, or some other ethnicity. And she's fetishized by Dusty's because she's non-Black. So Dusty's turn into bumbling, befuddled fools around these women as they are color struck and they fetishize anything that they perceive as foreign. And this is why we'll see many Dusty athletes and rappers getting taken advantage of by exoticals. It's because the exotical knows that he's a dummy, he's Dusty, and he's white worshiping. So although she'll be a slore and she slept with the whole crew and the whole industry, she knows that he doesn't care and is fixated on hair and skin color and that he'll still date her even though she's ran through and will even knock her up sometimes and even marry her. Then will later cry in the corner when she leaves him and takes everything that he owns. So now that we know the profile of your exotical, let's get into a few examples that illustrates what I'm talking about. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is this example that um, NM, I'll call her because I don't want to dox her, loyal follower who shared this with me via email. That really illustrates how much these men pedestalize these exoticals and how they desire them even when they have incurable STDs. So what we're looking at is a photo of an exotical and the caption says hashtag find women with AIDS. And on top of that, someone posted this and said, who's risking it? Y'all, I can't. But this is how dumb and dusty these nicknogs are. They don't care if she has an AIDS, if she has an STD if she can expose you to a deadly disease that's incur incurable, they'll still want to hit it. And we know Nick Dogs don't use condoms. And to make matters worse, let's look who posted this bullcrap. The official Kevin Samuels Real Fans page. This is a hot ass effing mess. I can't, but this is how much these men pedestalize and fetishize these women. They don't care if they have AIDS, for God's sake. There's a whole damn hashtag, a fine, quote unquote, fine woman with AIDS. As long as she's an exotical, they don't give a damn. They risking it off. Okay, so let's get into this next clip and shout out to RD. I'll call her so I don't dox her. So this next one is a video of an exotical who has been proudly smutted out by Naker. She openly admits that she slept with 500 men. Most men wouldn't want to touch this woman with a 10-foot pole. But in this video, we see the dusty, desperate-ass co-host Nick Nog, And he's ecstatic that he's this exotical smuts preference. So let's watch this. 
parent for that matter. I was watching a clip from the No Jumper podcast earlier. Cool podcast, but. And I knew I had to make a video on this. You know what? I'm not even going to get into the subject of this podcast episode. I'll let you guys see for yourselves. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. And today we're joined by a very lovely lady. Introduce yourself. Oh, hi. My name is Kazumi Squirts. Uh-huh. Um, I'm 0 0.01 on OnlyFans. I make 50K a week. A week? Mm-hmm. Damn, that's a lot. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. Uh, how do we end up here to together? Um, someone just sent me to Flyer. I'm a no jumper virgin, so I've never been on the podcast before, but I felt like why not? I'm in the city. How I'm many guys how many guys have you been with? Like probably like well, I used to be a gang girl. Um I used to do gang parties and I would get fucked by like fifty dudes a night. So I've probably been fucked by like five hundred dudes, but they were mostly black. That's actually a true story. Like, 500! <laughs> My sh** has never been softer listening to a woman. 50 dudes in one night. That right there is, is a feat. That is an achievement not many people can brag about. It's like those achievements on PlayStation that 0.01% of people have gotten. But you just know someone out there has done it. And this is that girl. The 50 beef jerky sausage sticks in one night achievement. Not gonna lie, this is the type of that makes me very scared to have a daughter in the future because this is scary this is f***ed up i don't want a daughter if it came down to it and i had to choose i would pick a guy but obviously i can't choose so i'd be happy with either <laughs> wait okay here, here's a good question yeah. hypothetically you walk into a bar you see me and you see ad both standing there at the bar which one are you going to gravitate towards? Who's more your type? I'm calling the cops first. But I <laughs> Just for being in a bar? Yeah, wow. I'd be like, whoa, something illegal is happening. But I would probably be with you. Really? Okay. Yeah. What is it? He doesn't think I'm attractive. Is it the african american Oh, um, yes. That's most of what's on my page. That's your fave? Mm hmm Really? But, I mean, I would like all flavors of the rainbow, but I've never been with a white guy. Ever? I'm sorry. Yeah, true story. Like, 500 and a white guy <laughs> didn't creep in. What kind of parties were these? They were, you know, you know. I'm glad you did it. Yeah. Hey, 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 y'all. It is Lexis Exodus, leader of the Black Women Exodus. If you didn't know already, Black women are beautiful. Black women are intelligent and incredible. Black women are phenomenal and make great wives and mothers. I want to speak to your manager. Black women should be respected and deserve to be loved. Hey, 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 hey. Shut the Black women deserve to be treated like human beings, at least. <laughs> Listen, guys, if you're like me, you are so tired of your favorite black female content creators getting harassed by the trolls, silenced on social media, and censored by YouTube. We work so hard to stand up for black women, and although YouTube allows us to be regularly berated, ridiculed, and degraded by dusties every day on the platform, as soon as we say one word to clap back, we're threatened with channel violations and are told to be silent or we will have our platforms removed. The biased algorithms, inconsistently enforced policies, and persistent trolling on YouTube is unacceptable and needs to stop. If you agree, meet me over on my Patreon, where you will be able to access completely raw, unfiltered, exclusive Lexus Exodus content. You will be able to access uncut, uncensored, and ad-free content, two bonus videos a week, access to the private Discord community, and much, much more. So meet me over on the Patreon at patreon.com slash Lexus Exodus. The link is also in the description below. Shout out to my exes. Mm -hmm. Black power. Yeah. 
Martin Luther King died for that, so. I mean, <laughs> even the NBA has got a couple of white guys in there, you know? That's an interesting reaction. You'd think from his reaction that a girl like Summer Rae just slid into his DMs, but no, this is far from Summer Rae. This is Kazumi, the queen of meats. If a girl that slept with 50 guys in just one night alone told me she liked me, I don't think my reaction would be to celebrate with my arms up and cheering like this simp is doing. That is far from a dub in my eyes. My reaction would be to distance myself immediately from this girl because I want to stay safe. I'm not catching any STDs on my watch. I don't know how down bad you'd have to be to be celebrating on camera over this chick. This may be the very first time a person of the opposite sex has shown interest in this guy. Even the NBA <laughs> has got a couple of white guys in there, you know? <laughs> Even the whole NBA, I mean, you still got a Kevin McHale here, Chris Mullen here, you know, no. at least a couple. I don't know, I've just, just never touched with them. Really? Yeah. Are you interested or no? Um, no, I'm sorry. Really? You wouldn't do it? Maybe for like a lot of money. For like, money, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> of course, for money. <laughs> for money, yeah. Okay, I've had sugar daddies that were white, but I don't count that because that's work. You know, that's my place of employment, so. Okay. Yeah, and of course they're white, so like. As a representative of white guys, we will happily let everybody else have her. We don't claim her. To tell you the truth, I'm actually very relieved by her decision. There has been so much meat processed through those walls that I think even standing near her would be enough to catch a few STDs. STDs that haven't even been scientifically discovered yet. This is a girl with a schl count of over 500 she's probably radioactive at this point okay okay wait so where are you from i'm from la i'm la native okay and uh at what point in your life did you sort of realize that you wanted to be a sex worker of sorts so when i was not this is a crazy story when i was 19 years old i was getting over a breakup and this dude invited me to a sex party uh -huh. and it was just this uh like sex club in like sherman oaks and um it was an orgy with like a bunch of strangers and it was awesome so um it, it just kind of spiraled from there, but I'm in a good place. Life's great. Okay, but were you, uh, would you say you are sexually promiscuous before that? Yeah, I was sexually promiscuous, but I was a Christian, so I only did email. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 these are all true stories. I'm, like, not even capping. How many times did you have it in your ass before you had it in your vagina? I had, like, a few dicks in my ass. Not at the same time, but, like, maybe, like, no. one or two. And did but you... I always even pooped, so I just, like, mm -hmm. didn't do that. Wait, yeah. you were giving poop? Yeah. As in you didn't know how to clean your ass? before you did no i just kind of was like thing on men yeah literally yeah but yeah it was on purpose you were on their on purpose yeah, I well, think I'm I confused. Just... Let's take a moment to give our thoughts and prayers for some poor father and mother out there. This girl was was Christian, or so she said. Imagine her dad was the pastor. I can't even begin to fathom what that poor dad must be thinking. It's quite possible she might not even have a dad, considering that ridiculously high meat intake. But if she does, God bless him. But anyways, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. Thanks for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for for some more juicy videos coming soon to the channel. Y'all, where do y'all find this? Seriously, where do y'all find this crap? This is fucking disgusting. This is gross. I don't even know where to start. So here's my thing. If you are grown and consenting, do your thing. But girl, we don't need to know the details of how your wife slept with 50 damn men in a night and how you probably have a prolapse. And her name is Kazumi Squirts. Child, whatever you spin and spewing out down there is probably acidic at this point. Girl. And y'all, I don't know if y'all caught that dumb Dusty Nick Nog celebrating. Because she said that she only likes to be ran through by Dusties. That's because they love their exoticals. They love their exoticals. You can be a ran through um, without walls, having STD, having smutted out smut. And they will worship the ground that you walk on. But it's important to remember, it's important to know, if you're a black woman, you need to be 5'3", 135 pounds, but you also got to be six feet tall, bone thin, a supermodel with a 20-inch waist and a 40-inch booty. You got to be the Virgin Mary, who's never been touched by a man, but you got to be a freak in the bed, too, and know how to deep throat. 
But if you're an exotical, child, you can be ran through. Like I said, have no walls. Would it, would it, Nini said, your clip has left your body. You can participate in sex parties regularly, be busting it open on OnlyFans, and you will be worshipped and pedestalized. And these dusties will celebrate your ass, bottom of the barrel scum ass, just because you like them and glance their way. And I don't know if y'all heard the non-black man's reaction who is who um, shared this video. He's mortified. It's almost like he's experiencing secondhand embarrassment. He talks about how he would be so embarrassed if this was his daughter. He says that you can probably catch a STD just by standing too close to her. I even shared this with my husband who is non-black as well. And he was disgusted. He was absolutely disgusted. He shared it with a friend of his and they were just so turned off. And, you know, this this is the thing, though. This is how groups of men that are men view these men who date these girls. It's like y'all, y'all neighbors, y'all will marry Kim K, whose vagina has been busted open, wide open on the Internet and who slept with every girl with a little coin in the industry. They're like, ill, you know, thanks for taking the trash out, Tyrone. And these men are celebrating. This is embarrassing. Okay, so let's get into this next story. And I'm not sure if this qualifies. Brittany Renner, is she considered an exotical? I don't know if she's an exotical or not. Um, I don't know if she's biracial, a mix of black and white. I, I don't know. But she she fits that prototype, the skin color and hair texture that these dusty Nick Nogs love to worship because they're white worshiping and they like anything that's not black. So anyway, she's a preference who's raped over the coals, these Nick Nogs, and whose name has made the headlines recently as she's gotten one of these dusties to knock her up. And now he's working over $200,000 a month in child support. Y'all, I can't. So let's, let's look at this story. So it says that she's trending after saying athletes are dumb and a resurface uh, clip and bid unconfirmed report. She receives $200,000 a month in child support. Um, let's scroll down. Here is the preference and the dusty nignog, the dumb, naive, stupid nignog who is being taken to the bank by this woman. Um, she secured the bag. There's their baby. And he's cheesing and she's happy. She's like, yeah, I done got one of these dumb dusties to buy inside me now, you know, I'm going I'm to be getting paid. I'm going to get taken care of for the rest of my life because this stupid ass is so damn dumb. He don't even know to strap up. And talking about a simp, that's a simp. That's a simp right there. That He need a big old ass tattooed on his forehead. These athletes are stupid and dumb. It's like they're lanky and awkward too in high school. And I think that's what happened. Nobody ever wanted them in college or high school. Then finally they signed these NBA contracts and get these known exotical groupies pregnant. And she just rakes them across the coals. And like this story mentioned, there's even a video, an old video that's gone viral circulating around the internet where she says that she intentionally goes for these dumb athletes because they're stupid and they're they're easy licks so let's watch this first people to deal with are the athletes none of them use condoms really so if y'all really want to try to come up off a check off a of man I mean, you could just fuck an athlete they're really dumb <laughs> first people to deal with are the athletes none of them use condoms really so if y'all really want to try to come up off a check off a of man I mean, you could just fuck an athlete they're really dumb <laughs> first people to deal with are this girl has no shame she has no shame. So she illustrates these Nick Nog's stupidity and how they're so dumb that they don't even use protection. And she's talking about if you want a bag, then yes. Then yes. You need to intentionally go for these dumb, dusty Nick Nogs. And good for her. Good for her, girl. If you see a sucker, lick it, sis. Hit that lick, girl. 
And this is why I have a little semblance of respect for LeBron, because you don't see him out here getting his stupid ass dragged across the cold by any exotical that he pedestalized. He was at least, I mean, we, of course, we don't know what he does behind closed doors, but he's at least smart enough to be loyal, you know, and to bring the Black woman who held him down to the forefront and to be loyal to her when he didn't have most of these dumb, dusty, athletic Nick dogs, the ink don't even dry on their contracts. And here they go, just frolicking off with the first IG exotical thought that shows them a little attention. This is how dumb they are. And they know how dumb and stupid you are and how color struck and how fixated on hair and skin color that you are. So they see a walking mark. They see, they see money bags with legs. Okay, so I want to get into this next story because I think that it's also important to emphasize, although these exoticals are pedestalized, they get mistreated. So they might get a little bit of money, you know, they might be crying in a phantom instead of a Honda. But the bottom line is that they're getting mistreated and they experience the same toxicity that uh, all other groups of women experience when they mess with these dusty dick dogs. So so I want to talk through this next example of an exotical who got in a relationship with an abusive Dusty, had a child with him, then shortly after wound up missing. And shout out to NM who shared this with me. Thank you so much, sis. So let's watch this and then we'll chat. Yeah, Joe, Yasmin's family on social media has asked for privacy tonight, but earlier today they were very concerned as her ex-boyfriend, Tyler Rios, has a history of domestic violence. Now, back in 2018, 2017, excuse me, he actually pleaded guilty to domestic violence and spent 88 days in jail. And tonight her family feels he might have done it again. The search is on to find Yasemin Uyar, and the toll it's taking on her family is monumental. I'm just praying every second that we find Yas Yasmin. There were hugs and tears poured out as her grandmother, Karen, along with friends, prayed for Yazi, as they call her, to come home safe. She was really fun-loving, and she loved being with Sebastian. She loved taking him to the park and doing th little you know, things with him, and she was just she was just a good, happy girl. Investigators say the 24-year-old and her son, Sebastian, were taken against their will by the son's father from their home in Rahway. The two-year-old boy was found in Tennessee Friday night. I'm so grateful to have my grandson back. I'm so grateful to know that he's okay. Police say his father, Tyler Rio, surrendered and is now in police custody. But the whereabouts of Yasemin still unknown. And as each day goes by, it's getting more heart-wrenching. Pretty much just hoping that she's safe, you know, for the sake of her, her family, and everybody else. Until then, the desperation is intensifying for her family, her friends, to get their sweet girl back home. It warmed my heart to see how many people have reached out. I just need them to continue to look for her car. Because if we find the car, we'll find her. Okay, so this was last month um, in July when this girl ended up initially was found missing. Um, and allegedly she got kidnapped by her dusty child's father. So this is what happens though when you're with the most violent group of men on earth. The poor girl and her kid were kidnapped by this man. And the child's father is a suspect because he victimized her before. He's um, had a documented record of domestic violence against her. Well, after this quick update, they found the two-year-old safely, but the mother was still missing. And guess what happened shortly after? You guessed it. They found the girl's body in the backwoods of Tennessee. So yeah, so but this this is what happens. This is what happens. So this poor exotical was victimized and was kidnapped by this man she ended up affiliating herself with and unfortunately lost her life. Okay, so let's look at this next story and shout out to Black women that divest from Black men. And actually quite a few of you guys sent this to me after it had gone viral. 
of a poor exotical and trigger warning to um, some of these stories will be sensitive. Uh, they'll be triggering, I should say, and they're uh, disturbing. So if you're sensitive to topics like that, then I'd encourage you to proceed with caution here. But so this next story is about an exotical woman in Atlanta who was victimized by a sexual offender who targeted her kidnapped her and then tragically took her life so let's watch this next news clip and then we will chat me tonight a 27 year old kidnapped and and tonight we're hearing the moment miriam abdul rob was taken atlanta police just releasing the new 911 calls from the shocking crime also new tonight the suspect accused of Miriam just booked into the Fulton County Jail, and here's DeMarcus Brinkley's new mugshot. He is expected in court tomorrow morning. CBS 46 anchor Tracy Hutchins listened to the 911 calls and explains how they shed light on the crime. Tracy. Rick and Sean, the calls are chilling and horrifying to think about, so a warning that they may be difficult to listen to. It all happened as a 27-year-old Atlanta woman is reportedly kidnapped at gunpoint. There's somebody just left with my girlfriend. For the first time, we're hearing the panic 911 call as Miriam Abdelrab is kidnapped from the front yard of a Southeast Atlanta home. On the phone, Jerry Antoine, an Atlanta musician who says Abdelrab is his girlfriend. He posted these pictures of the two of them together on his Instagram story. Antoine tells the dispatcher he had just spoken to Miriam moments before and she was on her way to his home on Burrow Street. Oh my God. Bro, I just watched her get kidnapped in front of my house. What the f***? Oh, what is my God. She had a gun pointed to her? Yes, I watched it all through my window in my front yard. He had a gun to her, and he forced her into a car. He had on a security shirt. But just four hours after she was reported kidnapped, a man walking his dog found Miriam's body on Lake Avenue. Lord Jesus. I walk, I see a Caucasian woman face down. He called 911 too. Lord, this is somebody's baby. Okay, and please tell me why does she look dead? She is face down. Her face, her nostrils and mouth are directly into the ground. Oh, exactly yes, she's dead. Oh, my gosh. I see blood <laughs> around her, upper body and arms. Atlanta police believe Demarcus Brinkley killed Miriam Abdelrab. Investigators taking out arrest warrants for aggravated assault, kidnapping, false imprisonment, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. It is so tragic to hear those 911 calls and how Miriam's life ended. A GoFundMe page has been set up in her name to help her family with expenses. It is already raised more than $33,000. Sean? No, oh, ma'am. Thank you, Tracy. Shush! That is heavy. So that's my first time listening to that full video. It is so awful to hear, you know, the boyfriend talk about how she was kidnapped and how he witnessed it. And then also to hear the man who discovered her body and to describe the condition that she was in. Lord Jesus. Okay. So anyway, so here is the woman that that he kidnapped and he tragically ended her life. Apparently she was a bartender. Poor thing. Yikes. Okay, and here is a dusty nignog who kidnapped her and and had tragically taken her life. This is crazy. Um, and this article talks about his criminal history because we know these dusty nicknogs, these dusty Tyrones, it's just in their nature. It's innate for them to victimize and to harm other people. Um, but it talks about how he has an extensive criminal record. So let's see. So it says he has a criminal history which dates back to his time in high school when he was arrested for stealing a teacher's iPod. And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of detractors will talk about there's the school to prison pipeline, but I'm sorry, I grew up in Blackistan, I grew up in the projects, and I didn't end up going to prison. You know, you make the choices that you make, and this, you see that this person was making those conscious choices to engage in criminal activity when he was a child in high school. 
Um, it also says in 2012, police responded to a child sexual assault call. Sheesh. Another report in 2013 states that officers were called in reference to Brinkley trying to R-word a five-year-old girl. My Lord. So this was a predator. He was terrorizing the community. Um, it says court documents show that Brinkley was behind bars from 2013 to 2016 for a number of charges, including aggravated child uh, M wording. So child sexual assault. He had already been in prison previously for three years for similar allegations. Um, and it said that when he was arrested recently for ending the life of this poor woman, that he led Georgia State Patrol on a high-speed chase. My Lord. He's hospitalized, but will be transferred to Fulton County Jail once he's released. Y'all, I can't. This is so disturbing, y'all. This is so disturbing, but these exotical preferences have it hard. So what happens when you are a predator's preference? What happens? You know, what happens? It's like being Jeffrey Dahmer's preference. You're first on the list to be victimized by these sick and demented people. You're the first catching the bullets. I mean, if, if you're the preference of a group of men who statistically consists of being narcissists, we know that studies show that they're more likely to be narcissistic. Uh, they have very high sexual assault records. They have very high conviction rates of being m warders So what happens when you affiliate and um, when you're around and in close proximity with these men? And not even that, because this woman didn't even know that man. She just happened to be his preference. And what happens when you're these, these men's preference? You're the first taken out, unfortunately. I can't. Whew. So that was heavy. So this is the tragic tale of the exotical. And the funny part is back in my mammy days, I'm very vocal and transparent about how I used to be a mammy social justice warrior. And I used to think that it was racist when I heard that certain groups of men didn't want Dusties dating their daughters. I thought that that was racist and you couldn't tell me nothing. You were wrong because that, that's, that's very bigoted. That's very racist. But now looking back in hindsight, hindsight is 2020. I recognize that these men understood something that I wasn't aware of, that I wasn't conscious of. They understood that a man's role is to protect and provide. And if that's the case, why would he encourage his daughter to be with someone who can't provide and who has no resources? But more importantly, why would he condone his daughter being with someone who not only won't protect the women in their communities, but they actually do the exact opposite and prey on the women and girls in the community. You know? And of course, you know, I can hear the detractors now saying, not all, not all, not all. We understand not all. We understand not all. We understand that there are a few good ones. But I think that we need to use critical thinking here um, and as a college educated woman, if you're a PhD, like they like to denigrate us, a lot of us for being, you understand statistics and you understand how to recognize themes and you understand how to recognize recurrent instances and issues in data. And if the overwhelming majority is that way and is problematic and is dangerous and is toxic and inflicts pain on people and victimizes people regularly, why would someone be the one stupid enough to gamble and take the chance to see? A mess. So that's your exotical, y'all. Sheesh, that was heavy. I'm going to go burn some sage <laughs> and woo and maybe meditate a bit. I appreciate you guys for hanging in there with me. Until next time, see you guys. Bye. <laughs>
Because if y'all come across a red iPhone, can you please bring it to the sound stage? Red iPhone, appreciate it.